because hip hop runs the world right now. It's been like that for a couple decades. Hip hop is the most used and sought after brand and, and culture, period, on the planet. You can't turn on the TV without commercials. You can't open a magazine without ads. Everything for any corporate giant in the world where the CEO may be the biggest racist and biggest hip hop hater in the world, but he knows for his bottom line, it makes sense to incorporate hip hop. So with Honor Among Thieves, the idea behind it was, with the album, it's a story arc, right? So it starts with these two characters, it's supposed to be my father and my godfather, who's his best friend, and how all that goes, and him finding out about me getting ready to be born. And at the end, it goes to what the relationship was like between that same guy who you met in the beginning and his son, which is me, and how he raised them and what happened, and everything in between encompasses that. I knew this record was gonna be the end of the album. I knew this beat, this record was gonna end it off and cap it off. But I wanted to walk it in a certain way as far as the record. Do you believe in honor amongst thieves and celebrating making it out here in one piece? Or better yet, taking it out on who couldn't leave and everything relating to how you want it to be. So the opening four is me saying, celebrating making it out here in one piece. Or better yet, taking it out on who couldn't leave. The ones who couldn't make it, the ones who couldn't get out. For whatever reason, sometimes they're their own design and sometimes not. Imagine if the tables was turned. Do you believe in knowing whatever you might have seen? It was all just a part of what we was titled to be. It was all in the song when we was finding the key. Singing along wouldn't show what entitlement means. Do you believe in you being told how to be you? Well, everything you are is supposedly not in cue. From mimicking to you being told how to improve and how you benefit depends on you following suit. Cultural appropriation, man, I hate it. I hate it with a passion. We should be able to enjoy one another's cultures whether it's music, fashion, food, art, film, whatever it may be. We should never be able to tell someone else how to correctly go about their culture. Imagine me telling an Italian how to do what they do as far as food, as far as fashion, as far as anything that has to do with them. My job is to only appreciate and respect and acknowledge their culture and enjoy it. Do you believe that you could be taught how to be who you already was before you was bogged down? Like this is what best represents y'all. Never mind the fact that I've yet to step in your yard or ever been that involved. Do you believe in loading the 4-4 and blowing the corridor for all that you want for? But learning the court of law could never be cornered off unless you was one of them. Would you just call it off? So all that's about white privilege. Imagine if you was in this situation and this was your only means, by any means, this is all you know and how you came up. Or imagine if something was specifically designed to go against you and solely you. Imagine that as someone who doesn't look like me, who doesn't move like me or live like me. Imagine if you did and it was designed solely against you. And if you were any other look or shade or design or creed, you'd be okay. It would be understood. It'd be figured out. You wouldn't be laid down in the street. You would just be taken smooth and cuffs, asked if you wanted Burger King, you know? It would be a different conversation. Or do you believe that you could be given it off a privilege and you could pass that to whoever you coming in with, and that'll lock arms like deciding that you get it, but the timing of it proves that you didn't. I mean, do you believe? Continuing the conversation, but now I'm going into Colin Kaepernick. When you had the whole NFL, you know, locking arms and kneeling together and locking arms and all that, yeah, that was cool, but the timing of it proves that you didn't, because it took you X amount of months, a whole season damn near, to decide to finally start locking arms. And the reason you locked arms wasn't because of what Kaepernick was standing for, it was because of what this clown president said that you felt came against y'all. And it made you think, well, we gotta do what Cap did because Cap got it a long time ago. Obviously, you still don't get it. Do you believe, do you believe in it all? Being amongst honor if thieves get involved, or being amongst honor if believing what you want becomes more than you ever would've thought. I mean, do you believe? There was a story of a kid who had his father every day, and his father had the grip, but he also had a name, or for more than just the grip. It was all for how he changed, and it was all because his kid wasn't supposed to be the same. The way the second verse starts, it breaks down this story, talking about a guy who's a father, who had XYZ going on in the street, and decided to chill out. So he had this balance of, yeah, he's a street guy, but he's also this type of stand-up individual as well. But the story of his friends was from off a different page, so his father was the difference under all that he became, but he still was with whatever. They could call him any day and they would get through it together. Every part of him remained. Then the kid had a moment where it all rearranged, with some kids unloaded on his partner for a name. 
And the kid saw it all from the draw to the aim. And he felt like he was woke enough to want all of the blame. But there was never a moment where I saw my man get clapped and you know I ran in the house. and It wasn't like that, but it was the idea of being willing to do whatever for your friends. One, out of loyalty, and two, knowing they would do it for you. But at the same time, you could sit here and say, well, certain guys may be willing to go the extra mile a certain way because they didn't have a dude 20 plus years their senior in the house every day. And an idea came to get the grip like his pops and have a conversation and end it with a shot. And it all made sense till he was picturing his pops and as much as he regretted it, he felt he better not. And then there was a kid watching all of the above with his pops in the theater and it caught him like a drug. He was hooked on the idea of wondering if son should have stayed to the end and started talking with his gun. As the story progresses in the verse, you realize I'm talking about Furious Styles and Trey Styles and Boys in the Hood. When Boys in the Hood came out, I might've been like nine, 10 years old, something like that. With my pops, whether it was books, movies, he would give me a book or take me to see a movie and then he would have me write a report about it. That was how I grew up my whole life. You know, when Trey mother told him, you gotta live with your father now. And Trey said, nah, mommy, but I, I, I see daddy all the time. Like I go over there on weekends, what's, what's the problem? And she said, nah, but we got to reverse it. It's got to be different now. I can't teach you how to be a man. I can't teach you X, Y, Z, how to survive in this world as a black man. Only he can. That's his job. That's exactly what happened with my parents. Because he felt if it was him, then all of the above would have took a different spin that would have started with a slug that would have spun someone around till he was coughing up blood and tucked him underground and it'd be all from out of love. But love made his pops break down what it was like to have to keep a tray pound and spray it out on sight. And how it ain't no turning back when you surrounded by them lights because he had a ton of moments where the pound saved his life. Before you make that decision to do X, Y, Z, know what comes along with it. Now, if you know what comes along with it and you ready for that, then by all means, there it is, because I know from experience, and I say I mean to my father, I know from experience what that's like. I know what that's like to have to have the moments where that pound saved your life. And he listened, and it wasn't hard to get what he was proving, but he still caught visions of him picking up and shooting, because he knew if it was him that his friends would jump into it, since they ain't have fathers that could give them an influence. And the more he realized the balance of both sides, when his pop said protect yours, let no one overstep yours, but know that when you step on, ain't no stepping away. To stick with you forever like how I'm here every day. But he still taught me how to load up, just in case. And due to my composure, a lot of moments were saved. Knowing everything you just heard and what it made, let me know what you would prefer further explain. Do you believe?